Hi, my name is Ryan Languish, and this is Ludo Lodge, a channel about sparking growth for game designers. And today I'm going to be doing a quick tutorial on how to do custom dice in Tabletop Simulator. So, Tabletop Simulator makes it easy to pull in some kind of like basic um, components. So, for example, if I wanted dice, I could bring out just like very simple um, standard dice, which may be all I need in certain cases. Um, but it may be that you want to customize the dice to actually have like images on the side that fit your game either thematically or maybe you want a different distribution, not just, you know, even probabilities between the, the different results. Um, and so much like cards and some other things in Tabletop Simulator, it provides you a custom option for importing custom dice. Now, much like importing cards into Tabletop Simulator, this is based off of templates that Tabletop Simulator gives you of how it's expecting different um, dice, depending on the number of sides, to be imported in. So let's take a quick look at where you can find these templates and then show you how to use them. So here I'm running Tabletop Simulator out of Steam, and if I come into the Steam client and look um, at Tabletop Simulator in the list, I can click into Properties then to local files, and then I can browse local files. And that's simply going to open up uh, my Explorer here. I'm on Mac, um, but it should be similar for Windows. And I can see, and I actually have it expanded here from earlier, um, this modding folder has a few different things in it, such as deck templates, deck builder, which um, would be used for cr creating custom cards, which I have another video um, as well, specifically on that topic. Um, but we're looking at dice templates here. So if you click in here, um, we can see that there's six things in here, anything from D4 up to a D20. And each one of these is simply showing, if we just open the image here, um, it's simply showing in kind of a weird, funky way what Tabletop Simulator is expecting when you import a die in. So basically, if, you, if we imported this exact image into Tabletop Simulator, the result is we would get an eight-sided die that has these numbers printed on the different sides. So if we want to make a custom die, all we really need to do is take one of these templates and use it as our basis for doing our, our custom graphics, and then save that image to import into Tabletop Simulator. Now, depending on your level of experience with kind of image manipulation or graphic design, you may have a program that you're, you know, whether you use Photoshop or GIMP or something that maybe you're more familiar with, or maybe you haven't really worked in any of that um, at all. So I'm actually going to just show a quick and easy way you could do it um, without even downloading anything um, using a free online to tool called Photopea. Okay, so I've simply opened up Chrome here and navigated to photop.com, um, which brings up this tool that's a lot like Photoshop, if you've ever seen kind of what Photoshop's interface looks like. Um, but it's a free version in the browser that you can use. Um, and so if you want to just do some quick image manipulation and aren't too worried about saving files or making changes later, um, this can be an easy way to do it. I have the window kind of uh, pulled over here so you can see some of the, the images I have on my desktop. We're going to be working with some very, very random icons pulled from uh, GameIcons.com, which is a, a great resource for just gif getting different icons for your games. But suppose I wanted to make a six-sided die that had some of these icons on the different sides. You'll notice here that I pulled the D6 template that was from that um, modding folder that I had just shown. And that's where we're going to want to start. So if I just grab this and drag it in and drop it, it'll load into Photopea and we'll actually see it load up here as its own layer. So if you've never worked with um, something like, like Photoshop or another program that works with layers, basically all you need to know is you only are ever editing the layer that you're in and you can kind of toggle the visibility of layers. So it makes it a little easier to work with um, images without messing up other parts of it. And so we're loading this simply so that we can see where we should be putting things. We're ultimately not going to show this in what the what we export. So um, we're going to want to then pull in some of our icons that we want to use on the side. So for example, I've got this nice Labrador head. So I'm just going to drag that in there. And then you should be able to move, move this around um, and resize it. If you kind of resize and hold shift, it'll keep the, the dimension ratio um, of width and height locked. I can kind of get it to what I want 
and I'm gonna stick it just over the template where I would want it to be. Not worrying too much about you know what the template looks like behind it. And so let's do that for some other ones. Um, we can pull in our beaver. I don't know what kind of game we're making here, but we, we roll Labradors, beavers, and fish. Um, and you'll notice that some of the numbers, specifically the six and the one, are actually upside down in the template which is just saying that the way it's gonna fold that template, it's actually, those sides are kind of um, upside down as far as how it's shown here, which doesn't matter a whole lot when you think of like what a D6 is gonna look like. There really isn't like an up or down. Um, but I'll show how we can just easily kind of flip things um, to fit that. And so I'm just going in here and I'm just um, putting my different images. But a common thing you might, a uh, reason why you might want to be making custom dice is because you might not just want a simple one through six distribution. So maybe on this die, I want, you know, a Labrador, a beaver, fish, but then the deer tracks, I want three of the sides to be deer tracks. Maybe that's something that just you mo more commonly roll in this particular game. So if I pull in my deer tracks, and you'll notice each one of these is just getting thrown in a new layer, um, and we could toggle the, or toggle them individually. So let's say I wanted to take these deer tracks. So for some reason I lost my uh, controls in the resizing here. If that happens, there's, the, there's this transform controls checkbox. I'm not sure how it got checked off, but that's how you're gonna get back kind of the, the option that you want here. Um, so I'm gonna resize this, um, if I can grab the right part, and put it down here. But because the one template is flipped, I'm actually going to rotate it, which I can do by simply hovering over the corner here to pull rotate. I'm gonna hold shift so it kind of locks to common dimensions and I can just flip it upside down. Since I want this one a couple times, I'm actually just gonna go in the layer list and I can duplicate layer. And now I've got another one of those that I can drag out and throw over the six over here. And then maybe I duplicate it again and put it here, but I want it flipped because the three is right side up. Again, it's not a big deal that it's not facing the same way as the numbers because, you know, it's just going to be on the die. But this is a good example of just kind of how this software, um, and I'm sure there's a lot of other free tools you could be using. This just happened to be the one that popped up in my Google search. Um, make it pretty easy to do this kind of thing. So we can see now we have these all in the right place and I can go and toggle off that background to give us just, just what we want for our, what we're going to export. And the last piece is we're not gonna want it to be on a transparent background like this. We're gonna want it to be you know, a, a solid color. So I'm just gonna use white. To do that, I'm just gonna create a new layer. There's a button for it down here. And in that layer, I'm going to use the rectangle tool to just draw a big rectangle over the entire thing, which is gonna default to red here. Um, I'm gonna choose for that to be white. You'll also notice that this layer is covering up everything we did. That's simply because this hierarchy of layers is determining what's on top of, of other layers. So I need to move this layer, just dragging it down to be below all of my uh, icons here. So I'll put it below that. So at this point, you know, we're not even looking at the template anymore. That was just to make sure I positioned things correctly. We now have this image that should be exactly what Tabletop Simulator is expecting for a D6. Um, with these six sides. So now we just want to go to file, we want to export it, and we just want to export it as a JPEG. And I'm going to save, and that's going to download that D6 image. So now we're going to hop back into Tabletop Simulator and show how, we gonna, how we're going to load that into our game. So back here, we're going to want a custom die, so I can just drag this out and drop it in, and we're going to be given these options, specifically what type of die, and that's mapping one-to-one -to, -one to each of those templates. We use the D6 template, and then it wants an image, which is exactly what we exported. So here in my downloads, I have that D6 image. I'm going to select that, just store it locally for now, and I'm going to import. So that's gonna load pretty quickly here, and if we zoom in, it's pretty small. We can see we have this die. I can make it a little bigger by just holding the plus key. We got a die that's showing our nice Labrador here, and if I um, kind of flip it between the different sides, which I'm just doing with uh, E, Q and E are to kind of um, rotate components. Um, we can see it's got everything that we want. It looks pretty good. And because we're in Tabletop Simulator, this is you know a physics environment, I can 
pick this die up and I can roll it, I can grab it and um, actually just use R for randomize or the roll in this context menu and it'll, it'll give it a random roll. Um, and I could copy and paste this, right? I could make a bunch of copies of it and I could roll all of those together. Now that's cool, but you'll notice something a little weird, which is that the hovering over this is still kind of treating it as though it was a standard D6, right? Like it's saying these are one through six and it's actually trying to add them up when I roll a group. Um, and that's a little odd, right? We wouldn't want this to say two. Ideally, we'd want it to say dog um, or something like that. So Tabletop Simulator does provide you with a way to change that using the gizmo tool. So the gizmo tool is this one right over in the side here. And if we go over, there's an option called rotation value. So if we take that and we click on our die, it's going to bring up this menu that's basically telling us what each side of the die is and what image is assigned to it. And we can go into the options for that and edit them to we don't want to change the rotation value, but we don't want the value of that side to be one. Rather, I want this to be, you know, tracks. So I'm going to come in here and just type tracks and submit. And so I would want to just go through each one of these and edit and, you know, make this dog submit. And this one's going to be another one that's tracks. And by doing this, um, I'm going to make it so that that hover value is actually going to make sense within the thematic context of my game. My, my very, uh, I know I have your, your interest peaked with my, my beaver, Labrador, fish, tr tracks in the forest game. Um, and so I, you know, just have to do this once. And you'll, you'll remember I duplicated all the dice. Ideally, I would have waited to do that until I first updated all these. Um, and what's our last one here? Just another tracks. Because I want to duplicate the version that I updated this for. Because by updating this, I only updated this one here. So if I go back, now when I hover over this, I'm getting dog, tracks, beaver, fish. That's all working. These are all still the numbers because I didn't edit those. So we can just throw those away, and now if we wanted multiple of these dice, we could throw them in, um, and we would have the proper values. And now if we roll these together, because it's not a numerical value, Tabletop Simulator isn't going to try to like aggregate those. So I don't get a, a hover value for the group, I just get the end of individual ones. Um, and that's pretty much it for custom dice, right? Like if you want a different uh, number of sides, you would just use the different templates and import it that way. Um, but it's pretty simple. It makes it pretty easy to get um, them into your game and that can really go a long way in just enhancing um, the look of the game and, and, and could be very functional depending on what you're trying to do in the game. So hopefully that was helpful. Um, if it helped you out, give, it, give the video a thumbs up um, and consider subscribing for more content like this. If you, This is the first video you've seen in the series. I actually have released quite a few videos at this point on Tabletop Simulator. Um, I'll link the playlist down in the description. Um, I'm always open to new ideas to get on my, my list to keep knocking out for topics. Um, but thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.